Guys, guys, you won't believe where I've been or when. I've returned from the far off time of Q3 2017 after the launches of AMD's Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3 and oh, you don't want to know what happens between now and then. But anyway, that's not important right now. What is important is I've brought back a little souvenir. Welcome to our early preview of Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5. The Phoenix O'Tour is a full-sized, minimalistically designed keyboard complete with Cherry MX switches and a new white backlit variant. Check it out at the link below. Okay, okay, so I'm no Doc Brown, and I drive a Lambo, not a DeLorean. So we should just get this out of the way right now. We don't actually have a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 3 chip. Or do we? No, no we don't. This right here is our Ryzen 7 1800X. And what we're going to do is use our motherboard BIOS to match the core counts and frequencies that AMD has announced and see how they might stack up. You may have your doubts about this method, but we've demonstrated in the past that it works shockingly well in this video here. So which chips will we be testing then? Well, aside from our Ryzen 7 1800X and 1700X as real world baselines and a Core i7-7700K to represent the blue team, we're taking the Ryzen 5 1600X and 1400X and the Ryzen 3 1200X for a spin. We'll be doing it all with our <coughs> replacement, <coughs> ASUS Crosshair 6 based Ryzen test bench. And as for our GPU, we'll be testing with our new FPS per dollar high performance king, the GTX 1080 Ti. Now considering that the highest clocked Ryzen 5 CPU is still a 3.6 gigahertz base, 4 gigahertz boost chip, the same as the 1800X, we're pretty certain that we're not gonna see any performance difference in single threaded tasks with the 1600X, making it slower in multi-threaded workloads, but potentially a wicked gaming chip. There are some things to keep in mind with these tests as AMD's precision boost is disabled the moment a custom frequency is set, we've had to lock the frequencies of our slower clocked virtual CPUs. Since precision boost and XFR only kicked in in lightly threaded workloads in our testing, we chose to split the difference between their base frequencies and maximum XFR clocks. That is 3.75 gigahertz for the 1400X and 3.6 gigahertz for the 1200X. This clearly isn't 100% accurate, particularly since that puts our lower end chips running at a higher base frequency while at full loads, it should still give us a ballpark representation for our overall performance analysis across all of our tests. Finally, we're uncertain at this time whether disabling cores on Ryzen also disables extra cache. So do keep that in mind. With all that boring stuff out of the way now though, let's kick it off with our gaming benchmarks. Today at 1080p, since these are mid-range CPUs that we're simulating, we see our virtual 1600X performing better in Deus Ex Mankind Divided than the lower clocked but pricier 1700X. Rise of the Tomb Raider shows us more of the same, while For Honor shows our 1400X also performing well with its higher base frequency. Sadly, an artifact of our methodology, since Ryzen doesn't boost for that long at full load. GTA 5 clearly will take all the cores and cycles it can get, while Ghost Recon Wildlands, on the other hand, shows only the i7-7700K's single-threaded performance, pulling away with a measurable lead. 
Doom gives the 7700K a much more significant lead with the Ryzen series, making a pretty linear slope after that. And finally, like GTA 5, Crisis 3 shows again a thirst for everything, with our 1200X falling far behind thanks to its mere four cores and four threads. Moving on to synthetics, 3D Mark shows our Ryzen platform generally outperforming the 7700K until we get all the way to our quad course, and the same is true of 7-Zip, where even our 1600X outperforms its more expensive Intel rival. PC Mark is another highlight for AMD. The 1600X's performance is close to the 1800X. And another instance where our methodology benefited our 1400X in a way that won't quite hold true in the real world. The 1600X again pulls ahead in the single-threaded Y-Cruncher test, but our multi-threaded test brings us closer to a kind of linear slope. Cinebench 2 shows us fairly predictable results, except for the i7, which only beats the much cheaper quad-core Ryzen chips. Rounding our test out, Asus RealBench shows us its preference for clock speed for image editing, thread count on encoding, and a combination of the two in heavy multitasking with our benches stacking up accordingly. But to put all of that performance stuff in the appropriate perspective, we need to look at pricing. At 249, the 1600X seems to hit the sweet spot with its 1800X-like performance in everything but our most multi-threaded benchmarks. The 1400X at 169 seems like a really solid value too, considering its thread parity with our i7 and decent scoring, which lands it at the top of the pack for performance per dollar. The 1200X rumored at 149 is, uh, well, AMD's marketing is all about thread count, and with only four, Ryzen just isn't pulling quite as much weight. However, at that price, it's actually our second best performer per dollar, placing it in an excellent position for a budget CPU. And if you've watched our Ryzen OC guide, you're probably thinking that this one is actually much closer to the Athlon XP 2500 Plus than the 1700X. And you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, though, Something our 8-core processor cannot simulate is how hot these chips will run or how well they'll overclock. So that all remains to be seen. So with all of that said then, we have to stress again that this isn't an exact measurement. In particular, our 1400X and 1200X scores are likely suffering from the loss of precision boost. But taken with a grain of salt, these results should paint a pretty clear and pretty exciting picture, one that we can't wait to verify against the real deal. Zotac's Magnus EN10 series is one of the smallest VR-ready gaming PCs available, measuring at just 8.27 by 7 by 2.45 inches. It's quiet while operating, and it's lightweight at less than 8 pounds, making it genuinely portable. You can even get it with an NVIDIA GTX 1070 to go along with its Skylight Core i5-6400T, its dual HDMI 2.0 ports, and its compatibility for high-speed NVMe SSDs. You can learn more at the link in the video description and get your own. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, dislike it. But if it was good, then like it, get subscribed for more videos like it, and check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also down there is a link to our merch store and our community forum, which you should totally join.